Hello and welcome to Qantas Life. I'm Robert Shockey, the CEO and one of the founders here at Qantas Life. And today we're excited to bring one of our, I'm going to say one of our panel doctors uh, with Qantas Life is one of our consultants with Qantas Life, helps us uh, evaluate different products and information uh, that we receive to see if we have uh, valuable products or unvaluable products or how they may be used or treated for uh, people. But uh, it gives me great pleasure, actually, to bring on Dr. Moritz. And uh, I, it's Dr. George Moritz, is that right? That is correct. Right, right. And um, Doc, thank you so very much for, for joining us here today. Um, I know that you and I have had uh, more than a few conversations about the products um, and you know their their basis and how they could be applied for people in their lives, but I think it'd be important. I think for people to hear from you uh, as one of our you know authorities with Quant- uh, Qantas Life, talk about your background and where you come from and 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 why you're involved. Well, thank you for the uh, so kind introduction. Uh, well, we're in a new age of medicine, and so many people are disappointed with traditional approaches and anti-aging regenerative approaches work completely opposite. In other words, get you healthy by getting you youthful first, okay? Whereas traditional methods let you get unhealthy and then try to stick something in your body that never belonged there years ago. In other words, when you had youth, you had perfect health. So for years, clients came to me and they were having trouble with their energy, their sleep, Uh, Women, especially their beauty, men um, were having trouble metabolically. And really what always came back to me was that we need to kind of rewind to when things were working right. So a lot of what we learned during the pandemic was about how the cells in the body work, the brain and the body. And when your body goes into hibernation, whether you got an infection or whether you even got a vaccine, and never quite felt right, your body is no longer energized. So the big word that comes up is energy. You know, I don't have energy. What do I do for energy? Right. So I got involved in um, going back and taking a more essential look at how the cell works, looking at how the the youthful chemicals that made you young years, years ago work, and then using technologies like we'll talk about today. In other words, Maybe we'll, we'll talk a little later about the first uh, synthesized drug in 1876 that we were using as an antiseptic, as something to sanitize the body. Uh, today, when people get blood, they often ask me, well, how do we know that the blood is sanitized? How was it disinfected? Well, we're using some technologies like infrared and we use some sensitizers, some uh, basic chemicals that will actually cause certain wavelengths to activate. And so people say, well, what are you really talking about? So we all are pretty familiar with visible light. You know, we walk outside, we see visible light. And then if we look at other energy forms, we'll be on the side of, let's say, microwave and radio waves, which we're familiar. And on the more extreme side, we're used to gamma radiation or x-rays. So we're like, wow, we have all these energetic vibrational waves. Well, in the middle, we have visible light. If we go a little below visible light, we have infrared. So the terms that we'll hear today are like photodynamic therapy, light therapy, infrared, and theralumin. So we're going to hear these terms. So we're using a form of light energy, uh, light that you may not be able to see. And when you beam it at certain wavelengths, you can cause positive changes in the body. So how do you kind of put the lighter fluid on the barbecue? How do you get it to work a little better? Well, we introduce certain dyes, dyes that we've used since the late 1800s. And we use these dyes and what they do is they cause a certain frequency to get vibrated and that can actually knock out certain bad cells like fungus or bacteria and mm-hmm. actually cause stimulation, cause stimulation at those wavelengths. Sure. So let me, let me put you on pause there. So, you know, you know this because uh, you've used this when you said that uh, people have asked you about the blood and how is it cleaned and, and so on. Um, that means, uh, were you, are you a medical surgeon? Are you an 
I, I believe that you're an OBGYN by I, trade. I am a pelvic and, surgeon. And, and, by and right now you're currently a, a, a concierge doctor. That I do you that travel well. to actually mm-hmm. visit visit patients and, and take care of their medical care. Is that correct? That's correct. So in other words, in the traditional model, I was taking care of clients as a solo doctor. I started delivering babies. That's how I started. Okay. And then when women were not doing well outside of pregnancy or trying to get pregnant, I was involved in infertility, high-risk pregnancy. Okay. They came to me and said, look, I went to my other regular doctor, the doctor, you know, I don't see you after pregnancy. And they just told me I'm getting older or doing too much. Well, right. that didn't sound right. So I made a note of it, but maybe I too ignored it because I said, well, let someone else take care of it. Then years later, when my body broke down, I got exhausted from delivering babies all night and running a ragged (laughs) schedule. I actually stopped delivering babies, which I didn't want to do, but I had to quit. And then I continued my daytime practice. Well, I still didn't have energy. So then (laughs) something came to me. I said, well, they came to me for years complaining about these problems. Well, what, why don't I tackle it? I mean, I understand how chemicals work in the body. I understand how hormones and peptides work. I know a lot about the night-day cycle. Why don't I do this for them? Because it's a little unfair for them to have to go and, you know, scan the Internet, try products, go to 20 different doctors. I mean, it's very frustrating. So I took it upon myself to save me, you know, not selfishly, but of self-interest. And in the process, I figured some things out. And one of one of those areas was how to regenerate cells, how to keep the cells younger, and how to get people over illness quicker in a way that was the way that it worked when they were younger. See, when, like I said earlier, when you were young, you had youth, and youth is perfect health. And when you have perfect health, everything works right. So why are we sticking substances in the body that don't belong there? Why are we convincing you that this is how it's going to be? And that's what we do in anti-aging regenerative medicine. So yes, you're right. I started as a surgeon taking care of people one-on-one. I too had a change in my life. That's my story. And I empathetically realized that other people were suffering too. So I made it my mission to take the things that we're talking about today, light energy, how to activate immune cells, stem cells, how to uh, wipe out you know, bacteria, uh, bugs in the body basically, whether it's in your sinuses, in your mouth, or your skin, and basically have you function like you did years ago. That's what our goal is. Well, bring it back. Bring it back. I like it. I like it. Come back. Come back to health. Come back to what you know. You mentioned in a previous interview with you about you know some of the patients that you're working with today as a concierge doctor. You travel quite extensively uh, most of the time. So appreciate you taking the time today to join with us. Uh, when you're when you're in consult with your clients and, and patients um, now, you, you mentioned something to me about the fifth vital sign. When you're talking about wellness, regeneration, and, and coming back to yourself, is mm-hmm. the focus on the fifth vital sign in that particular instance? Or can you explain what the fifth vital sign is and how this, maybe some of these products we're gonna about to talk about really kind of dovetail into the fifth vital sign? Oh, excellent question. So for years, we assumed that when you go to the doctor, they t- check your temperature, blood pressure, pulse, and weight. And if those were okay, I'm great. Now, maybe they would order some blood work, but really from year to year, the annual exam kind of became that over reassurance that if these four things were okay, whether you're on medication or not, that you're going to be okay. But we've all known someone who within a year of their annual exam, who got cleared, who got very sick, whether they got cancer, or they got a heart attack, stroke, I mean, simply they died. So we started thinking, I said, well, there's more to it. So about 10 years ago, you're very correct, I got into some controversy because, you know, there was a missing vital sign, what we call our fifth vital sign, and that's body fat. Because body fat is not just an accumulation of calories that we carry around in our midsection. It is a metabolically uh, active organ. It's your largest hormonal organ. 
as a hormonal expert, I give a lot of talks with, with uh, clients and you know, I explain to them that fat is your largest hormonal organ. It's spewing out all these chemicals that give you high blood pressure, cancer, inflammation. See, during COVID, people learned this word cytokine. What is a cytokine? Well, it's, it can be an inflammatory chemical. Well, fat is already producing it. So if you're fat, wow. you know, even if you decided that the vaccine could help you, you had less of a response. People who were uh, overweight or obese, and there's definitions for it, they got more COVID. So it actually is a risk factor that needs to be evaluated. So if you're not evaluating this fifth missing vital sign, then you're actually missing, you know, a, a, a true representation of how healthy or unhealthy you really are. And that's amazing because I'm going to echo that. There was recently a, a news report that that showed like all the people who have passed on from from the pandemic, and they showed like a catalog of pictures, all the faces, right. elderly people, and and um, what was interesting to note, uh, at least from my standpoint. And I did gain some weight over COVID. You know, I was definitely about 20 pounds less uh, than I am currently today working on it. I'm a work in progress under construction. But um, but I did notice that that there was uh, several people that were overweight in the, in the pictures. Like you could actually see the pictures and there was an overwhelming number of the people that had unfortunately passed on from the pandemic that was that was displayed that were primarily either older or overweight. So the overweight plays a role in, in our, our fifth vital sign, as you, as you say. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and without it, you're really giving an incomplete evaluation. And naturally, people are going to be asking, saying, well, how is there something that I could already be doing at home that I could check my own? See, you really can't rely on the traditional system anymore. You know, I don't want to disappoint anyone. Standing in line at Walgreens and CVS to go from a big bottle to a little bottle. I mean, look around at the line. You certainly took a representative look at people who got sick or succumbed to the, to the virus. Well, just go to the pharmacy, CVS, well, look around. They're going right. from one big bottle that they fill to little bottles and people are in line acting as if this is health. And unfortunately, the doctor's in the way. They are the ones prescribing it. So we have been kind of conditioned to this. But smart people, like the type of person listening today here with us on this broadcast, they're asking, well, shouldn't I know this number? And do I really need to go out? Do I have to leave my home to get this? And the answer is no, you can use it. So earlier you asked, you know, we have four vital signs, the blood pressure, pulse, temperature, weight. The fifth vital sign, let's just call it body fat for now, body fat. Okay. We'll get into what else you could be looking at. And then if you start looking you know, at sixth and seventh vital signs, you're starting to look at the, the way the, the harmonics of the body work. In other words, that there's vibrational energy in the body and, you know, there are higher levels of, of vital signs that we can talk about. But for today's purpose, if people started uh, some awareness of the fifth vital sign and started to use therapies that regenerated their immune cells, their stem cells, and did it in the way that we're discussing, they would be already have taken control of some of their medical wellness. That is, that is a great segue to what we want to discuss today. And, and um, I know that uh, we, we might be talking about such a tiny little thing, like, like, the, like this little device, so that's this right. tiny yeah. little device with uh, some pretty big impact in the daily life. I know that I, I am using this in conjunction with something else that that I, I would love to hear uh, you talk about, which is the methylene blue uh, liposomal. And, and, but it's such a tiny device, but what a, what a big impact it's already made in my life personally. But what, are, what is your thoughts? You have one and, and what, are, what, what is your thoughts on, well, on the device? As a, as a background, so a we've moment. known a lot about infrared, okay? We, as okay. I said, it was used and is currently used in Central Europe to sanitize blood. So what they do is they use it to, to clean, you know, the, uh, without disrupting the cells, they're using the waves to disrupt it. When you add something like the methylene blue, which is a, think of it as a dye, okay? okay. Um, it, it's a dye, it's a sensitizer, and there's many of them. What it does, it hits a certain wavelength. So that's, you know, that's taking care of blood. So if someone was saying, okay, how do you use it? 
if you use something like methylene blue separately, and we used to use it to help people's um, oxygen levels if they had like uh, cyanide or carbon monoxide poisoning, we've used that. We've also used it as an antiseptic in urinary infections. As a gynecologist, we would often hit patients with a lot of uh, antibiotics, but the problem is you develop resistance, fungal overgrowth. So methylene blue, we used it as an antiseptic. We use it as a kind of a dye, and so it, it's a really neat medicine. The one thing you didn't hear during the pandemic is how most people could be on something like this, which kind of binds up by itself, the dye will bind up microbes, uh, bacteria, because it has a positive charge, and it prevents the uh, entry and attachment of the virus. So it's a, it's a pretty cool way to approach it. Um, it actually probably helps a lot of different microbes, we're calling bacteria, fungus, and parasites. Uh, but just for the purposes of our discussion, it prevents the binding. When you add the, um, the infrared, the photodynamic therapy, the Theralumin, um, which you've just displayed, um, you know, you put it on your wrist, you run this a couple times a day, you are basically activating the dye in your body. So you take the drops, you put it under your tongue, you wear it on your wrist. See, years ago, we used to have mouthpieces because we used to use it to uh, clear out the oral cavity. Uh, up in Canada, they actually have one for the sinuses. They actually developed one. And so they use the dye to clean out the sinuses. Wow. So this is growing. And there's actually literature on the skin as well. You can use the uh, methylene blue type cream, and then you can activate the collagen. So, you know, everybody wants to have nice skin. Well, you can do that as well. So the the applications are many. Um, if you just use the Theralumin on its own, you would likely stimulate immune cells, your stem cells. Um, it's, it's another way of stimulating blood flow and then um, activating your immune system. So if somebody said, well, what is the one takeaway? Well, you could do something almost on a daily basis that doesn't interrupt your activities, whatever you're doing, wear it, it could start cleaning out your system. And then as you got a little more interested, you could use the methylene blue system, the dye under the tongue, uh, with other benefits as well. And, and there was some reference, which is really incredible. And, I, and you, you said, you know, wear it during a day. So this has a really nice, like, gold band. Yeah. And so I, um, I often forget that it's on. Um, and then I forget that it's on because I put it on. It's so lightweight. It's only a few ounces. And then it's, it's going through... Why, why at this point in, in, in the body, like, and should I just put it on my mouth as well for bacteria? And I am using the, a few drops of liposomal every day and, um, and, and just very, very small amounts, you know, three to five drops per day. Um, but I feel better and, and I don't feel as tired or lethargic anymore as well. Well, certainly. So everybody suffers with pain. So a lot of us, you know, that, uh, infrared stimulation will actually improve blood flow and then there's all these endogenous opiates you know the pain chemicals in the body and so forth the methylene blue actually works as what we call a nootropic in the brain um see what does it do we have little mitochondria in the body these are little power generators little alternators and they're constantly trying to make this energy currency we call atp so yes we eat food but unless it gets converted into this energy currency, it doesn't do much for us. So most people understand that they have no energy. Well, the brain has these mitochondria, as does the body. When you take the methylene blue, even by itself, it will start to crank up your production of your brain chemicals. And so we've had everything from studies um, in depression, uh, schizophrenia, um, I mean, we've had case studies where people had noted some improvement. And while what I'm talking about is not meant to be medical advice, is that the more you research, you start realizing that this is cranking up your energy production. So if you take methylene blue, you have oxygen, and then you add the infrared, well, now what you've done is you've already cranked this to the next level because you're basically you're adding uh, light energy to the process. So, yeah, you really should feel better. Uh, maybe some of your aches and pains are better as well. You've got better blood flow. Um, it will be hard to know what improves in everyone, but most people will walk away saying, look, 
if you don't get sick, you don't know that you helped your immune system, but you probably did. Right. You know, if you stimulate right. stem cells, it's probably helped. The convenience of this one is that you wear it as a band on the wrist. And you are right, there are technologies for the mouth, the, the, uh, the, the nasal area. You can get larger infrared units that you can sit on. But here's what people tell me. They can get those units, but what do they, what do, they do? Do they use them? No, because it doesn't fit into their lifestyle. So we right. became a little more practical and said, what if we take the combination of the, the drops and then you put the Theralumin, you, you have given someone something they can do every day. And, and I only wish before the pandemic we, we had been able to get this out to everyone. I wish I could have had this conversation 10 to 15 years ago. But the reality is the good news is we're having it today and people Absolutely. can get started with this. You know, yeah, it's it's truly amazing that we have this technology, and it's just like you know, uh, you know, we didn't have type and when we had typewriters. Um, this is back in the day when we had typewriters, and they did the whiteout that was put into the typewriter. You could backspace and see the whiteout. I thought that was an amazing advent of technology. I don't know why, but for me personally, I thought that was such a great advent. So I think there's always these progressions, and there's. There's almost an advent in people's awareness, and they're looking for now alternate waves of health and wellness. And so we see a lot of practitioners now including wellness into their practice. It's not just um, let me treat your symptoms, but we're also looking at nutrition. We're looking at their wellness. We're looking at their, uh, their you know, they're, they're incorporating more and more of wellness along with their practice than, than just you know, just necessarily treating the symptoms. And so they're helping people get well versus just trying to get them from being sick. Um, so I think that there's a there's a change in the mentality as well. I don't know if you uh, agree with that um, statement or have you seen that with other practitioners? Well, well here, here's what we've come down to is, you know, people will come to me and say, Dr. Moritz, what do you really do for yourself to keep yourself healthy, medically well ahead of the curve? And what do you do for your family? You know, Anybody could go to the doctor and, and, and ask them, well, I want something that you crank out at Walgreens and CVS. I guess I'm picking on them today because that's where <laughs> people end up thinking that, right. you know, I am band-aiding that whiteout that you talked about. I am band-aiding yeah. a problem when in reality, you, you're really not necessarily even doing that. You know, this is a very temporizing measure when you do that. Here, I think you can get control of it in your own environment. You can do something well for yourself. Most people will notice some benefit. We can't always claim you'll feel it right away. But for people whose immune systems are under attack, and for anybody who wore a mask, subjected themselves to multiple vaccines with unknown results, you know, this would seem like a pretty smart alternative. Um, mm. I got involved with it because I was doing my research. Um, I practiced in Europe 20 years ago, and I started to see that, you know, people approach health differently. So I think we need some basis for traditional medicine, especially the monitoring. We do want to add things like the fit vital sign checking body fat. And in a different conversation, we'll talk about how they could already have that assessment at home and which will tie into a lot of things like their sleep and their metabolism. So we'll kind of sneak preview that in a, uh, a next discussion. Yeah, but absolutely. for today's purpose, yes, somebody could walk away, would already be doing something good for themselves that they're going to be compliant with. See, a lot of times we'll say, oh, I could buy this big infrared device, and, and, and more is not better because you're just not going to use it. And then now right. with the methylene blue, they could start already – uh, activating their cells. They could already get that a antiseptic effect, help the brain's effect, basically, you know, jumpstart their energy because that's what we started talking about at the beginning of our conversation. Right. And if you only did it for your energy, that alone would be worth getting involved in. Absolutely. Well, I know that we're about out of time. I, you're so gracious with your time today. I know we're about out of time. I wanted to ask you because you, you did mention um, – you did mention about proteins and, 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 and sort of attachment of the uh, methylene blue, and perhaps this would have been a good thing to let people know about prior to COVID. But since the vaccines have basically, you know, a lot, a large population is now on, have, has taken the vaccine, vaccination and the boosters that go along with it. Um, what is, what is spike proteins? Do you know anything about spike proteins? 
And would this help with spike proteins? People have been talking about it and shedding. And, and these are terms that, to be honest with you, I, I have no basis of what, what these things are. But it seems like people are very concerned about shedding from vaccines and spike proteins. And would methylene, methylene blue and, and perhaps uh, the, the Theralumin watch uh, band at least help? In the, in that in those particular instances, what's sure. your opinion? So there's so, opinion. yeah, the, no, there's uh, that's an excellent question. So there's things we know and things we don't know. So when this was the first genetic experiment that we did on a mass basis, okay. So if they take down this uh, broadcast, it's because I said it, okay, and we okay. run that risk. <laughs> um, we have right. never. Um, required or advocated on a mass level, not stratified for risk factors like obesity, uh, age-adjusted, you know, vulnerability of the immune system. And so what we've done is we really don't have six to ten years of data, okay? We, we don't have that. The question you're asking is that did people who got the vaccine have an immunologic reaction? A certain percentage of them did. And while we don't have autopsies on people who succumbed even to vaccine-related deaths, what we know is that different parts of the body will have these little attachment proteins, what you're calling spike proteins. So it okay. was a, an area that the immunology uh, doctors wanted to attack. The problem is that we, we have not done enough autopsies on people who succumbed to know where they were located. The big issue is how you react to any vaccine, be it, you know, a, a lot of what we think is uh, autism really is the schedule of how early we give vaccines in the country. So I'll digress a little bit, but it'll make sense. So when you look in certain parts of the world, they have the same time schedule for vaccines for children, okay, as the United States. Okay. And interestingly, in those countries, meaning also the United States, we have higher rates of autism. So we pretty much disproved that there was any one thing in the vaccine that was causing the, the autism, but the timing that you give a vaccine to an immature immune system. See, so like the dumbest thing in the world is to say, okay, we have a problem, everybody needs a vaccine. Well, if you have autoimmune where your body attacks itself, you could make it worse. If you're too young and it's immature, your body sees this as a foreign invasion. It could be as worse as being exposed to the, the vaccine or, or the virus itself. I mean, it, it, it's worse. It's worse than anything. So the timing of when you give things. There were a number of people that I knew, clients, who had post-vaccination syndrome. So they, uh, their mitochondria, the little energy powerhouses, they underwent yeah. hibernation. So their body, they had all this oxidized glutathione, so they couldn't protect themselves. So getting back to why we don't know how you react, the one thing that we can say is that you want to clear viruses and bacteria out of your body. So not that it's a medical recommendation, but if you wore it, maybe not even every day, the Theralumin and did your methylene blue, you'd have a chance to clear viruses. It's sort of an extrapolation of like, you know, if you're going to do it in the in the blood banking, okay, why couldn't right. you do it in your body? Now, I did have an oral mouthpiece prescribed for clients who had COVID and they were using higher doses of the methylene blue. Now, mm -hmm. I always ask myself, had they already been on this portable therapy before, could it have prevented some of the cases? I think the answer is yes. So whether you're using the methylene blue alone because it prevents attachment entry and then add the photodynamic therapy, the Theralumin, um, the point is that you could probably be doing something good for your body on a weekly basis and if it ever reduced your chances of getting other infections. See, we talk about corona, COVID, but there's other infections out there. And we're thinking everything from dementia to an autoimmune disease starts with viruses. See, so we think there's a trigger. We, we're, it's not right. just that you have the certain genetics. It's not that you just had the certain exposure. It's that your body didn't clear it. You know, think of cancer. You know, some cancers may have been related to an early exposure of virus. So while we can't claim that this is going to clear it for everyone, I can just say when people ask me, what do you do? What's the best thing? I would stay on something like this. Would I stay on something that 
energizes your, 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 your brain and your body, methylene blue, yes, I would do it. Do it in combination. I think we've started something that, that probably could have been done years ago, but here we are today. So the good news is we, we can start today. Absolutely. And, and today we're so grateful, uh, for you coming, coming on, on this, on this podcast with us today, uh, Dr. Moritz and for your wealth of information and experience, uh, both in, in the, uh, in the surgeries and, and op- at delivering babies to helping people, uh, around, around the country as you fly all over, helping as a personal doctor to, to many different people. And, and being one of our lead consultants for, for Qantas Life, it is really, truly uh, an honor to hear your perspective on, uh, on Methylene Blue, on things that we could do for our wellness, and uh, the fifth vital sign. I, I hope that we can have more time to talk about the fifth vital sign and some other things that we're talking about. And, I hope uh, so, too, and, yeah. And, and this little device, I, I've been getting a treatment the whole time. Uh, you know, maybe I shouldn't call it a treatment. Maybe I should just say I'm getting my, I'm getting my cleaning done this whole time while we've yeah. been uh, in conversation. And uh, it, it's, it's really great. I, I really sincerely appreciate your time today. Well, the pleasure is mine. Thank you again, Robert. Thank you. If you're interested more about uh, Qantas Life, please visit www.quantuslife.com. If you're interested in looking at the Theralumin uh, Red Light Band, please check it out there. Uh, there's also some, some other amazing products at Qantas Life. And be sure to tune in again when we revisit more conversations with Dr. Moritz. Thank you very much and make it a great day.